Hi guys, um, we're Be The Pubian and we get a lot of questions on our Instagram asking um, how we edit our photos and how we get our clean to our feed to look so clean and minimal and how we use it is we just use two apps. One is Visco and one is the Instagram app itself. So we're going to show you how we edit our photos today using those two apps. And um, But first, before you can edit a photo, we feel that you kind of need to understand what all the different adjustments are so that you can get a better understanding and have more control of um, your photos and how you want them to look. So before we start using Visco, we're going to kind of go over each adjustment, like what exposure, contrast, and all of that stuff does, and how it affects your photo. Um, yeah, so let's just jump in. And so for background, we've been using Visco for about two years now. Mm -hmm. And before that, um, I've used Photoshop for the last decade. And the reason we use Visco over Photoshop is because it gives a decent amount of control, mm -hmm. but the trade-off is obviously you have, um, it's quicker, but it doesn't, you don't have the um, possibilities of using Photoshop, but it's a good trade-off for how fast it is. So for our purposes and for most people's needs, this is going to be pretty pretty good for what your needs are. Mm -hmm. So let's just uh, jump into the app. It's this icon right here. Um, if you look at the screen, we'll have it up. So jumping in, this is this is how the application looks. So you can use this button right here to like add your own photos, which we're not going to do because we're going to walk through ours. But the first photo we're going to use as an example is going to be this one. Which one? So this is the original image without anything added to it. It's not a bad image, but you know, just like how you use Photoshop to enhance it, we're going to walk through all these different features. Mm -hmm. um, when you're presented with the first menu, this is like all the different presets that you can have. Mm -hmm. We've bought a few of them. So ours, I think, what is ours? The, I think it's like called like the classic whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like $10. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I'll look it up and we'll put it in the link. But it gives you a lot of different presets. As you can see, it goes all the way to X. Funny enough, though, we only stick to the first couple. Yeah. Got. So of what we realize is that um, our styles have changed over the time, which, you know, mm -hmm. it should, because you should experiment and try out what works best for you. But the one we've kind of gravitated towards is the A6. Mm -hmm. And here, I'm going to put it on at 100%, as so you can see. The A6, the A series is like an analog. It's supposed to give it very like a Kodak film look. Mm -hmm. So this is supposed to look very like vintage film like. And what that means is the blacks are a little bit blacker. The whites are a little bit warmer. And it gives it like um, a little bit more of a, um, I don't know how to ex explain it, but it's more... It's almost like vintagey and it's contrasty, vintage but it's just, you get like a warm feeling from it. It's not it's not a cold detached look. Because it's, in comparison, if you try like another filter like the C's, I see love how the C's, this is going to get a little mm -hmm. bit colder, or um, the F's will make it a little bit more fadey if that's what you want. Um, we I tend I also like HB Hype Beast. And that that one's also free. Yeah, that's a free. But see if you like toggle through all of these, you get a totally different feel. Um, the S is definitely clean as well. The S is really good if you guys are into minimal. Mm -hmm. S and the ends are by far like the cleanest ones. Yeah. But my thing is, it's uh, for versatility. I don't think we found one that's more versatile yet than the A6. Than A6, because we use A6 for landscapes. Yeah. For portraits. For outfit of the days. For detail shots inside. And we're we're gonna show you the versatility of. We're just gonna show you A6. So jumping so in. Good. When after you select the one you want, so ours is gonna be A6, which is this one right here. Uh, it puts it at a hundred percent, which is at twelve. So what you want to do is use a slider and this is going to adjust how much on or off you want. Mm -hmm. So we typically go somewhere around like eight, eight or nine. Yeah. So it's, it's a little bit more than medium. And, um, 
but not in full effect. Mm -hmm. So that's the very first step. It's like your base layer before you put all your fine tune in, right? Mm -hmm. So the next thing you're going to do is go into this button right here, which gives you more fine adjustments, right? Mm -hmm. So um, here, I'm going to hand it to Jasmine, and I'm going to talk through it as she edits it. Okay. So, so typically when I edit, I have about five to maybe seven steps for when I edit. I go through about five of these, but we're going to show you what each of them does first, or as, as I go, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, so then the first thing I tend to do, because it kind of encompasses the, all the picture, is exposure. Okay. Exposure is pretty self-explanatory. It's just, it's brightness. Yeah, so if I turn it up all the way, you can see the photo gets brighter, and if I do it, um, that other way it gets darker. So because I think this photo is a little bit too dark, I'm going to bring it up a little bit, but not too much. So I never really go more than like one. So it's typically about, yeah. it's like small, small minor adjustments. So this one's probably about, it's going to be like 0.5 or 0.6. And the key to this is, obviously, if you take a great photo before you jump in, it's going to make your life a lot easier. And how we typically, when we shoot, mm -hmm. we always err on the side of caution, so mm -hmm. always underexpose a little bit. Because it's easier to bring details back in when you brighten it versus and Yeah, versus once, the way. once you lose it, it's really hard. There's mm -hmm. only a certain amount that you're able to pull back. And Visco can't do that. I think you, have, you would have to go into Photoshop. It, yeah, it's it's just a lot more difficult. So yeah. you know, so that's that's brightness. Obviously, it's pretty mm -hmm. self-explanatory. So you can see like it's already brighter with just 0.5. Um, you can see more of my details. The whites are a little bit more white, mm -hmm. and um, it's just better. So then the next step I do is contrast and contrast. Contrast is I think it's uh, it's the compression of the histogram from black to its whites. Mm -hmm. So basically it's just going to make your whites whiter and your blacks even blacker. It's going to make that contra mm -hmm. contrast bigger. Yeah. So it depends on what you're going for. If you're going for that fadey look, you know, lower maybe, the maybe lower the contrast unless you want the fadey with the contrast, mm -hmm. which is also really cool. But for how we use it, um, I typically like a little bit more contrast because I do like the blacks to be more black and the whites to be more white. Yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement. I, I like blacks to be pure black and the whites to be mm -hmm. pure white. So for this one, you can see like if I were to lower the contrast and it kind of just becomes this like muted color. But if you go too much, then it just becomes like, yeah, it's just too it's, much. Again, we're so think of think of exposure and contrast as affecting the whites and the blacks. It's not it's not colors per se, but it can be. You're, these are like global changes to what you see as darks and lights, I mm -hmm. guess, instead of whites and blacks. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you increase the contrast, you're just making the difference between the two more drastic. Mm -hmm. okay. Um. So I typically set it a little bit higher, but not ever too much. Again, kind of like exposure. So with this one, I'm going to go with 0.9, and you can see again that before and after, it just brightens up the whites a lot and it makes my all the shadows a little bit darker. Um, after that, you can kind of use from straighten, crop, XQ and YQ, those kind of affect like how the picture looks. Yeah, I mean, you guys probably know what crop is, like that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there's different like ratios you can use if you're if you have one preference or another. Mm -hmm. Straighten is it pulls up the little line so that you can you, you know can make sure it. yeah and it has a little thing at the bottom so it, it lets you you can measure it and you can figure out like if there's like a window or the ground so that you make sure that your photo is straight. If it's really helpful if. Um, if you're dealing with archi architect mm -hmm. photography or something like that. Mm -hmm. But for our sake, it's we're not going to really mess with it too much. Mm -hmm. um, skew is um, not necessarily really important for what we're using it for. But it, again, but it's again, really good yeah. for if you're doing, like, if you're taking mm -hmm. pictures of buildings or cityscapes and all that. It's really, really yeah. useful. And then why is just kind of like up it's and Yeah, it's skewing this way. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. think of it the graph. Yeah. Um, and then sharpen and clarity. To be honest, I don't know what the difference is between the two. I use clarity, mm -hmm. but um, they're kind of the same thing. They just kind of like crisp up the images. Mm -hmm. 
So if you see, if I bump up all, clarity all the way, a lot of the details, very... you can see like the grain in the wood, you can see the cracks in the concrete, um, you can see... This, this is just like helpful if your image is a little soft. Um, I would be really careful with this because it makes textures very dramatic. Mm -hmm. um, it's something I would use very sparingly. It's not, it's not um, recommended to go overboard on this. Yeah. Unless... Typically, I would use Clarity if we took the we took the photo from our iPhones. But because our camera is pretty good, generally I don't really use it yeah. for um, like cam photos that are from our camera. Um, so then my next step is saturation. I tend to like sat photos that are less saturated, and saturated is when. Um, Saturation is just, uh, think of it like color pigments. If mm -hmm. you have, with zero saturation would be pure black and white. Mm -hmm. And then, um, full it's, saturation. it's not, yeah, full saturation is just more pigments. In Visco, you can't go full black and white. Unless on, you use the filter. Yeah, unless you use the filter, but I'm trying to give you like the most dramatic so you understand the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just how much pigments are in the, the photo and mm -hmm. if you want more put more saturation mm -hmm. less put it less yeah i tend to like a little bit less just a little bit though because you don't want your skin to look not like skin and you don't want everything to kind of be discolored so i like to go a little bit less okay. and then after that um sometimes if your photo is too overexposed you can do highlight save and that kind of just like makes the highlights back, a little yeah. bit less contrasty but because I like the contrasty that is something that I don't do same with shadows it can bring back the deep like notice like around my knee like it kind of brings back the, the I'm not shadows. I'm not a fan of that like mm -hmm. I said I prefer my black to remain black mm -hmm. um, so I don't really mess with these so much if if you need to use these use them very sparingly because mm -hmm. it, the images when you adjust it a little bit, it makes a big difference, so just be really yeah. careful with it. Um, and then the next step I typically do is temperature. Um, we go back and forth between this a lot. I tend to like my pictures colder, which is like... Um, we, we flipped. Which is I, a little bit more blue. I was originally the cold mm -hmm. person, and then she was the warm person. Mm -hmm. For just in general, you want to be go towards the warmer side because... It, because your skin's your skin is already yellow. Warm. Your skin yeah. is like a yellow red. So if you go I towards the we're blue, we're Asian, so it's a little bit more yellow. <laughs> anyways, anyways, bad joke. That was um, bad joke. The you typically just want to go warmer, just because it's a lot more pleasant on the eye, because mm -hmm. it's how you naturally see the world. Mm -hmm. So I prefer a little bit of the warm in, but. Um, she can walk you through what she wants to do with this image. Um, because I feel like this image is already really warm, like if you look at my hair, if you look at the coffee, it's it's pretty warm. So I, And then I typically like my white backgrounds, if I am shooting against a white background, to, for it to look a lot, to look more white. And to do that, sometimes I have to um, make it a little bit more cold. So I just do it a little bit because again, I don't want my skin to look green or um, unnatural so I tend to just decide or de I mean make it colder a little bit so when we're saying cold and warm the difference between the temperatures is you have blue on one side and then you have yellow on the other so mm -hmm. your whites and your mids and all that which way are you shifting them towards it's either more blue or more yellow and um, that's what we mean by warm or cold mm -hmm. it's just those two colors yeah and then typically that's all I would do on our photos. Sometimes I might do tint, and that's a, like if the photo is too green or it's too yellow, I can kind of adjust it's, it that no, way. No, it's, no. it's oh. green and um, magenta. Mm -hmm. So you use, I typically use tint the most. It's when your skin, it's, a, it's all about skin color because guys like, People don't know realistically like what this background is for example like you see it as white right now right but it could be a cream color or whatever but we all know what skin tone looks like there is 
hopefully there's no one out there with green skin or <laughs> like you know magenta skin or whatever so the most important thing throughout this entire editing is making sure the skin tone looks okay mm -hmm. because if you have the rest if your skin tone looks okay and let's say the background was originally blue but now it looks a little bit more purple or something mm -hmm. like that they're not you're okay. all, no one's yeah. gonna know what the actual wall looks like but again people know what skin tones look like mm -hmm. and so tint is really important because when you pull it back like this it's very green and you know if you're going for that film look that's totally okay but if you're going for something very natural um on the reverse it's very magenta so this is kind of the flip between the two mm -hmm. and this is really good for if there's a little too much green in your skin and you need to pop in a little bit of paint to like balance it out mm -hmm. this is how you can do it so like if you're sitting in grass and the grass is kind of like reflecting onto your skin yeah it's this, there's this there's really a lot nice. of times where maybe you're standing next to like a brick wall mm -hmm. and then the the brick color is getting onto your face so mm -hmm. it's making it look more red than it normally is or like she said if you're like posing next to some grass or green trees mm -hmm. and then the green is coming onto your face mm -hmm. you don't want green looking skin so mm -hmm. this is how you go about fixing it and then for this one everything looks okay it's not it's not bad one way or another mm -hmm. so you know you don't really have to do anything with this one it looks really okay mm -hmm. so I just wanted to explain what the difference between these two are but for this image it's fine mm -hmm. yeah um, and then if to this this there's a button that does skin tone and that can control if it's like more red, oh, that's, more that's green. A, that's that's a your thing. I yeah, but typically I don't do that because we try to get it right on camera. And if I do need fixing, I kind of just use tint. So I'm gonna set that at zero. And oh, you know what? I think skin tone would be if you guys are familiar with Photoshop. I think it's called. Um, it's not hue. It's the other one. I think it might call, be called vibrance. Mm -hmm. It's if you guys are familiar with Photoshop, I think that's what it's called. Okay, so this is typically the final product from Visco, and then I'm just going to go ahead and save this one out. You should do it before or after. Oh. That's what you can see. Okay, so before, after, that was our before, and this is after. And if you want to just see your progress, you just kind of have to hold your thumb over the photo, and then once you release it, it'll go to how you edit it. So you can see it's a lot more brighter, it's a little less contrast or less saturated, a little bit more contrasty, and this is kind of um, generally how we get our look. Cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it out. I typically do um, actual size, and then I'm gonna go ahead and bring it on over to Instagram. And typically here, I don't do any of these filters because I think they're poop. Um, and I don't think they're as natural. So then I'm just going to go into edit. And again, here I kind of just tinker with a little bit of brightness. Yeah, and it helps when you're fine-tuning on Instagram because this is the final step of the process. I guess you could think of it like the, the final review. Mm -hmm. And um, because it's on this white background, you can really mm -hmm. see how it's going to actually look when you actually post it to Instagram versus Visco, which is on black, I think. Yeah, That's and I think with yeah. Instagram, what I like most is that I can control the sh shadows and the highlights where I can't do that in Visco. So for here, I can go into shadows and I can really blacken them if I wanted to. So this is typically what I do to make it even more contrasty. So I tend to go um, like about 15 to 20. I'm going to do there, and then I like to bump up the highlights too because if I bumped up, up the shadows and I have to bump up the highlights just a little bit. Um, so I go a little bit there, um, and then that's pretty much all I do. So I just do brightness, contrast, warmth, saturation, highlight shadows. It's all the same thing. This it is. It's just fine tuning. But like then whatever. I don't know what this button does really, but it's called Lux, and I just like to do it because I don't know what this makes makes things look better. I think it just like overall again puts more contrast if I want. But I don't I don't do too much. Typically I just do about maybe like five or ten. So I'm gonna go there and you can see like that's kind of again you can put your it's thumb over it. Anytime. And it's barely anything but again if you look closely the shadows are a little bit darker. 
and things like that. I don't fine tune a whole lot in Instagram because I try to use Visco for most of that. Um, and then I would just go ahead and post, and that's pretty much the final photo. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so let's run through with these. Yeah, so then we're gonna go ahead and do it just a little bit more quickly now that you kind of get the gist of what we're doing. So right now we are going to. And this is just gonna show you like how versatile Visco and, and A6, A6 is. which is free, so you guys can just get started with not paying anything. And if you guys, you know, like if you like this, there's plenty of other um, different different presets. packages and mm -hmm. presets that are for sale mm -hmm. but you know this is a really good way to get started and see if you like Fisco and what they offer okay so for this one I'm just gonna undo all so that's our original image I'm gonna pop on a6 um, I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit and just just as a disclaimer the way we like to edit is that you, we don't want it to look like it's been edited mm -hmm. and that's kind of been our goal from the get-go is that all this editing that does happen it's supposed to look very natural and subtle. um very subtle not heavy-handed that's kind of the key to making this look good at least for us mm -hmm. so everything we do we're trying to keep things looking natural and minimal at least from the outside mm -hmm. Pretty much all I do in anything. Okay, so then I'll save this out. Just do the visco part. Okay, and then that's kind of before and after. I'll show you before, wow. after. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty dramatic, cool. but you wouldn't really notice from when you're just looking at it from, you know, like you see the final image. It's you. You might be able to tell it's been Photoshop, but again, it's not. It's not dramatic. Mm -hmm. It's very subtle. Yeah. At least we think it's. Subtle. And then the last one we're gonna do is. Doesn't matter. Just pick this one. one.
So you can see A6 works for anything, for That's portraits, for coffee shots, for Paris, for Palm Desert, and everything in between. Yeah, that's what works for us now. And this yeah. is us in the year, I'll tell you. I know, we're probably different. on to something different right now. <laughs> yeah. But for now, that's our that's our secret sauce. Yeah, so now you know how you can get our photos. Um, thanks for watching. Bye!